What's up everybody, Pi Guy Coding here, back with another video. Today we're going to be doing the make array consecutive to function, which is kind of a mouthful, but um, let's just get into it. So it says rat retior, I probably butchered that name, but got statues of different sizes of as a present from Codemaster for his birthday, each statue having a non-negative integer size. Since he likes to make things perfect, he wants to arrange them from smallest to largest, so that's important, from smallest to largest, so that each statue will be bigger than the previous one by exactly one. He may need some additional statues to be able to accomplish that. Help him figure out the minimum number of additional statues needed. So there's two kind of steps to this problem. First, we're going to want to, as they say, sort them from smallest to largest, or arrange them from smallest to largest. And then we want to know how many more we need in the little in-betweens. So how many, what's the minimum number of additional statues that we would need to make it keep going up by one? So that each statue will be bigger than the previous one exactly by one. So let's get to the coding. So if we go into the function, we know that we're going to have to use a counter in this case because we need to figure out the minimum number of additional statues. So um, let's just name it count and we'll set that equal to zero. So next, so we're going to want to arrange them from smallest to largest. And the way we can do this easily is by just saying statues.sort. The dot sort method will actually already take your array and sort it from uh, smallest to largest or um, in alphabetical order if you have letters in there but in this case we only have integers so it arranges it from smallest to largest so now we have our count and we have our sorted array and we basically want to figure out how many of these statues additional statues we would need so for this, we're going to want to go through the array with a for loop, and we're going to want to look at the item or the index that is one after the current one and compare those values and see what we, how many more we would need. So in order to do that, we're just going to use a for loop, and we're going to say in range of length of statues minus one and the minus one is so that we don't go out of index and um, the the range length is just used because it would be um, it just makes it easier to iterate through the array so let's just sketch this out a little bit so that we can see kind of what's going on so what we really want to do is let's say we have the array that they have here which is six, two, three, eight. Six, two, three, that's a terrible three, eight. So now we're basically gonna sort that, so we've already done that, so that's gonna transform almost into this, into two, three, six, eight. And that's a sick looking eight. But yeah, so that's what we have right now. We have this 2368. And if we go through with the for loop, and we, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's increasing by 1. So if we go to this index, and we look at this index as well, we see that they're increasing by 1. But in this case, we have 3 and 6. They're not increasing by 1. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to have to take the difference between these two and subtract one. And I'm going to show you guys why that is. So if we have six over here and three over here, the amount of numbers in between them is six minus three minus one. And that's three minus one, which is two. And um, this is important um, to visualize and not just um, think about it in your head because it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, you can obviously see that like in your head that there's two 
numbers in between 3 and 6, but it might be hard to kind of get this formula that we're going to make in our for loop. So if we kind of take this idea and we just go into our for loop, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to say if statues sub i plus 1 is not equal to statues sub and the sub just means the little notation statues sub i plus 1 this might look a little bit confusing because um, it might be hard to look at this and think about what's happening so let's go back to the sketchpad so if we take a case where there actually are numbers in between such as with 6 and 3 there are two numbers in between and if we look at the for loop, we're basically saying that if statues sub i plus 1, which in this case would be sub i is 3, and if we add 1 to that, that's 4. If we're saying that that number, which we said was 4, is not equal to the next one, meaning it's not going up by 1, then we're going to fall into the if case. And in the for loop, statues sub i plus 1 is, in our case, 6. So therefore, 4 is not equal to 6, so it would fall into the if case. And then we're going to be using this formula that we came up with before. So if we implement that formula, we're just going to say that count equals, or you can just write plus equals because we're going to keep adding to count every time that this happens. Statues sub i plus 1. So in our case that we gave here, that was 6. And we're going to subtract 3, which in relation to i is statues sub i. But don't forget that we have to take that 1 off at the end. So we're going to put those in parentheses and just write minus 1. And if we look over here, we did that minus 1 kind of at the end because um, this represents the numbers that are in between those numbers. So else, we're just going to say continue. And continue just means pass or go on to the next iteration of the for loop. And we're just going to return count. And if we run the tests, we get them all right. And we click Submit. And it looks like we got it. Perfect. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful of some sort. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.